Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It's The Savage Nation, Brian Sussman filling in for the good doctor. My friend Michael is under the weather. He was fighting through the program yesterday. But this crud that's going around has gotten the best of him. So filling in here from the left coast, where I've, I've of course, been on the the same station with Dr. Savage for years. He founded KSFO. I mean, he was the founding member of what's turned out to be an iconic conservative station on the left coast in San Francisco. 855-400-SAVAGE is the number. 855-400-7282. Don't forget michaelsavage.com. And by the way, I'm at michaelsavage.com right now. Why go anywhere else? All the news of the day. It begins with one of the lead stories. The fall of Mrs. Barf rhymes with Harf. Ah, yes, Marie Harf. That piece of work. State Department spokesperson. Well, they say she's being uh, she's being run out of the State Department. No, she's getting a raise. Now she's going to be John Kerry's director of communications. Great. Great. Yeah, the, the way these people are running the operation of Washington, D.C., it's almost like they want to get us into a war. The fall of Ms. Barf. The flub machine, and we've got some some proof of that coming up on the broadcast. The war on cops. Third white police officer shot dead this week. I don't know who would want to be a cop these days. The cops are so under the microscope. And now, of course, we have a Department of Justice that's going balls to the wall, aviation term, balls to the wall to take them out. I believe it's an attempt to federalize our police forces here in the United States. And we have some stories to go along with that as well. Obama's ISIS strategy sparks doubt and resentment among Pentagon officials. Well, yeah. What is the? Can anybody tell me what the strategy is with ISIS? Can anyone tell me? Don't blame Bush. Under this particular president, ISIS has grown and has become, well, did we even hear of an ISIS during the Bush years? These are the worst of the worst terrorists this world has ever seen. There have been bad guys, sure, in years gone by throughout history. I understand that. But now they've got weapons, the likes of which no one imagined. And this group has money, money. We'll talk about, can anybody clearly state the ISIS strategy? As far as I know, it's let them take as much real estate in the Middle East and North Africa as possible. Give them back their beloved caliphate. Sometimes it makes a rational person just has to step back sometimes and ask the question, what team is this guy on? And you know who I'm talking about, Barack Hussein Obama. Also this morning, or I should say this afternoon here on the Savage Nation, I will make a few this morning gaffes because uh, I have a morning show in San Francisco, so don't hold that against me, just move past it. King Obama blocked by the Fed. This broke yesterday, as you know, from listening to the Savage Nation. Obama smacked upside the head. This was a big deal. When you get this federal appeals court refusing to lift lift that injunction against Obama's deportation amnesty. You know, I think we could safely call this president the illegal president. Well, we have illegal aliens, although now we're supposed to call them what? I heard this on Savage's show yesterday. The ACLU says we're supposed to call the illegal aliens um, international commuters. This is an ill. That's true, by the way. We'll get to that story as well, in case you didn't hear it yesterday from Michael Savage himself. But the bottom line is, we have an illegal president in that, in that this is a man who looks at the Constitution and devises ways to hack it, to get around it. He's a constitutional hacker. Really. He tries to get around it, tries to find ways to get by it. Constitution, schmonstitution. He doesn't care about the rule of law in this country. Congress, schmongers, I don't need them. I'll go it alone. That's exactly what he did with the Deferred Action for Parental Accountability, or DAPA. He went it alone. And you had this Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals calling him on it. Folks, we live in a nation governed by a system of checks and balances. It worked. The federal court stopped him. 25 states joined Texas in suing to halt this amnesty. Why? 
because it's illegal. What he did was illegal. That's why we can safely call him on matters like this the illegal president. Changes Obamacare, stroke of the pen, no big deal. Okay, back to michaelsavage.com. Oh, countdown to Mecca Band. Go figure, you're kidding me. I don't know how many of you, I know many of you have read the book Countdown to Mecca. It's Michael's latest novel, part of the trilogy. And uh, like all of Savage's books, uh, they, they are banned from one outlet or another. In this particular case, I think we could safely agree, it's the New York Times who refused to review the book. Uh, Michael Savage, the plot to every, and by the way, you'll hear it time and time again from those who haven't read the book and have no intention of reading the book and just want to smear Savage. They'll say, well, it's the plot to blow up Mecca. Well, yeah, but when you read the book, you realize the plot is stopped. It's not as if Michael is hoping to blow up Mecca. It's a plot that stops the blow, but I'm not going to tell you anymore because you got to read the book for yourself. It's available in stores now. So we're at michaelsavage.com. You know, there was another thing that happened today. And uh, this is a woman who, you have to remember, Carly Fiorina, who's running for president. Uh, There was a time in the 90s where she was the female businesswoman of the year for several years in a row, I believe. Uh, She is, let me tell you something, she's hardcore. She's a hardcore decision maker. She's a fighter. And when she was in the Silicon Valley, I think she was the first uh, female CEO of a uh, top 50 Fortune 500 company. Uh, there were a lot of people who didn't want to see her succeed. Seriously, especially in the 90s. It was a man's world in the Silicon Valley. And she made a lot of tough decisions. But I love this because she will tell you exactly what she's thinking. As opposed to, for example, Hillary Clinton who doesn't like reporters all that much, does she? But she was on Andrea Mitchell's show on MSNBC, which means nobody saw it. But we've got the audio, and we'll play it in just a bit for you here on The Savage Show. But uh, she's talking about Hillary Clinton. (laughs) Oh, She just, she tears into it. No teleprompter, no notes, no nothing. She says, yeah, well, there's some wonderful things that Hillary did as Secretary of State. Um, But she said, it's also true as Secretary of State, she called Bashar al-Assad... Syria, a positive reformer. She did. It's also true in 2011 when she was Secretary of State. She said that Iraq was a free, stable, sovereign nation. And now we have a nation falling apart. ISIS growing. It's true that she said she could reset our Russian relationship. (laughs) And so how's that going for us? That's Hillary Clinton. She has nothing to run on. She's got nothing to run on by her name and the power that the Clintons embody so well. Carly Fiorina. We'll talk more about her on the program as well. How about this? The mother of the Navy, of a Navy SEAL killed in Ramadi. This gets back to the ISIS strategy. What is it? I'd really like to know. At 855-400-SAVAGE, what is Obama's ISIS strategy? I look at what ISIS is doing all around the world. It frightens me. It frightens me. I look at, the, I look at how awful these people are and have no respect to life whatsoever. And, and you know, if... How? What should the strategy be? Carly Fiorina actually addresses that. She does, and I'll get into this in just a bit. She addresses the strategy. She, she was asked, if you were president, what would you do? What would you do? She talks about having a Camp David conference with our Arab, Arab allies. And uh, who are our allies? The Kurds. They've asked for our help. We haven't given any. The Jordanians. They've asked for our help. We haven't given them any. We uh, have, um, guess what? You have King Abdullah of Jordan asking our country for help. We give him nothing. So what does he do? He's going to China. The Egyptian president says there's a cancer in the heart of Islam. He wants Washington to share intelligence with him. They won't do it. So again, you just ask the question, whose team is Obama on? But enough of Obama. Here's the mother of a Navy SEAL. I've actually met this woman before, Gold Star Mom Debbie Lee. So her son was killed in Ramadi, which, of course, has been taken over by ISIS. Listen to what she says here in cut three, please. It's just sickening. It's gut-wrenching to see what's happened over there. 
And I just feel like our administration isn't doing anything to be successful. It's almost as if they want to lose over there. And it's just the attitude is so insensitive and so flippant. I feel like they don't have strategies. Um, as I said a minute ago, it feels like they don't want to be successful over there. They do want to lose that territory. Listen, Debbie Lee, uh, my heart goes out to her. She lost her son, a Navy SEAL. I believe he was the first Navy SEAL killed in the war. She's a wonderful woman. She loves America so much. What is the strategy? I really want to know. Uh, Robert is calling from Washington, D.C., WMAL. Robert, thanks for checking in on this, the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you so much, sir. Um, I just wanted to say our president, when you really look at everything that he's uh, accomplished, should I say, since he's taken office, if you look at what he's really done, um, he's supposed to defend our country first. That's supposed to be his primary job. And everything he's done, when you look at it for what it is, is to unravel everything to protect the, the country, the citizenry, and everything that he's doing now to the Department of Justice is to, is to uh, create civil unrest and uh, just turn everything upside down. That's why it, the man has no policy in the Middle East. He has no, he doesn't have people that can advise him properly that are the politicians, not the military, but the politicians. But it, it's really a travesty. This, this man is an anarchist. That's what he truly is. Well, I mean, look, Robert, thanks for your call. You meet, when you meet true diehard leftists, especially the activists and agitators that are on streets throughout America stirring up trouble, like the people in Boston who were allowed the space to destroy, they are anarchists. They are anarchists. They are. And anarchy is now taught on our college campuses. The left doesn't mind anarchy whatsoever. As long as it's a controlled type of anarchy, the likes of which we're seeing on our streets, and the likes that are keep placing cops in jeopardy. I mean, like I was saying at the very beginning of this program, who would want to be a cop nowadays? you got the Department of Justice breathing down your throat, about down your neck. Uh, you've got the bad guys knowing that you're going to think twice, perhaps, about taking action. Where was the story over the weekend? We had a cop who made an arrest somewhere because a guy was open container on the sidewalk. You're not allowed to do that. Hey, buddy, you, don't, you can't be drinking on the sidewalk. Cop goes up to him and says, listen, you gotta get rid of the you got to get rid of the booze on the sidewalk. The guy starts hassling the cop. Okay, I guess I guess you can get away with that now. Kind of like a dare me, I da- like I dare you. Guy starts hassling the cop. Cop tries to, threatens to arrest the guy. The guy starts running. Cop grabs the guy, gets him to the ground, puts the cuff on him, and the surrounding crowd beats the crap out of the cop. This is the day and age in which we live, fostered by this administration. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, the Savage Nation, 855 855- Four hundred seven two eight two. Don't forget michaelsavage dot com and the countdown to Mecca in stores now. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica dot com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call eight hundred B U I C O I N. It's the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE, michaelsavage.com. And don't forget the book, Countdown to Mecca, in stores now. We'll talk more about that later in this program. So Carly Fiorina, as you know, she's running for president. I think it's a good thing because Hillary won't be able to claim sexism as long as there's a woman running on the Republican side of the aisle. I've known about Carly Fiorina for a long time here in the Silicon Valley. There are a lot of people who have worked for, with her in a number of capacities who say she's great. People that were laid off when she was a part of HP Hater. So there you go. But I can tell you something. She'll tell you what she's thinking each and every time. Here she is today on MSNBC. Sadly, no one was listening, but now they are. Uh, she's talking about Hillary's record. This is clip 13, guys. Clip 13. 
that as Secretary of State, she took women's rights and human rights off the table for discussion with China. It's also true as Secretary of State that she called Bashar al-Assad a positive reformer. It's also true that in 2011, when she was Secretary of State, she said that Iraq was a free, stable, sovereign nation, and now we have a nation falling apart, Iranian influence growing, ISIS growing. It's true that she said 